Hello everyone, welcome to Informatica support videos. My name is Jefflyn and I'm a part of Informatica Global Customer Support. In this video, we're going to see how to set up a SharePoint online connection in IICS. Now, the SharePoint online connection can be used to both read and write data to the SharePoint online uh, endpoint using IICS data integration tasks. Using SharePoint Online Connector, we can access both document libraries and lists that are available in the SharePoint Online instance. Uh, in order to set up this connection, there are a few prerequisite tasks. Essentially, these tasks are used to generate the client ID, client secret, and the refresh token that are needed for the connection uh, setup. Now, in order to generate the uh, previously mentioned values, there are four steps that we have to complete. First is to get the client ID and client secret. Following that, we will generate the bearer realm. The next step is to get the authorization code. And the final step is to generate a refresh token. Now, let's quickly look at a demo. Uh, so in this demo, we are going to go ahead and complete these four steps and set up one SharePoint online connection. And we're going to test the same to see if it is working fine. So let's jump right in. Now in my IICS instance, I will go to connections and click on new connection. And let me just give a name for this connection. And the type of connection is SharePoint Online. Now, the client ID, client secret, and refresh token, we need to have these values generated first. So let's get on with that. Now, the first step is to generate the client ID and client secret. Now, in order to do that, let's open a new tab. The URL we need to access for this particular purpose is to be in the format as that you're seeing on the screen right now. So what I will do now is the site name and the site, a uh, sub site domain. I am going to replace this with my SharePoint URL and the site and sub site that I am trying to access. Once that is replaced, let's go ahead and hit enter. Now this will prompt you to log in to your Microsoft instance. So just go ahead and provide your Microsoft username and password and hit sign in. Once you've logged in, you will be redirected to the app registration page. So once you are here, just go ahead and click on generate to generate a client ID. And do the same for client secret. Now just ensure that there are no special characters. I see a special character. So let's just go ahead and generate it again. In the new client secret, I don't see any special characters, so we can go with this. Now let me just provide the other details. Now app domain is essentially the endpoint we're trying to connect to. So I'm going to just provide informatica.com and for the and for the redirect URL, I'm going to provide localhost. Now, once these values are provided, I will click on create. Now, this will register the app and return the uh, details that we've just created. So just go ahead and make sure that these values are copied and stored for later use because we're going to need them when we are trying to create our connection. Now, that is the end of the first step in the prerequisites. Now, the step two, uh, as we previously saw, is to generate the bearer realm. Now, in order to do that, we will need to open Postman. 
So to generate the pair realm, I'm going to take the same URL that we used for registering the application. And we're going to call that in an API format. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to replace the site name and the subdomain. Now, once that is done, let's go to header. And in header, we want to pass a key called authorization. And the value will be bearer. Now, once this is done, just go ahead and click on send. Now, this API is expected to fail. So don't uh, get worried if you see a failure response. Once you've received this, just navigate to the headers in your response field and look for the header www-authenticate. Now, as a value for this particular uh, field, you will find the bearer realm returned. So just go ahead and copy the bearer realm and also hold on to that. We will need that for the later steps. Now, additionally, uh, we also will copy this particular value, which is the uh, application principle value, which will need in the generation of the refresh token. So I'm going to copy this value as well. Now, once that is done, our step two is completed. Now, step three is the generation of the authorization code. Now, in order to generate the auth code, we want to go back to the browser and let's open a new tab. In order to generate the authorization code, we are going to make use of this URL template. Let's make this into our SharePoint endpoint along with our site and subsite. And the client ID is what we have previously generated in step one. So just go ahead and copy the client ID and replace that as a part of this URL. Now the scope here is going to determine how much this particular application has access to. So if you want to provide all of the permissions to read and write both your document libraries and your lists, just go ahead and provide web.write as the scope. And that should ensure that IICS has all the permissions required. And also for the redirect URL, just go ahead and provide the URL that you gave when you created the client ID and secret ID. In this case, I have given localhost. So once these values are pasted, let's go ahead and make this call. Just go ahead and say trusted. Now, once that is done, you will notice in the URL, you will have your redirect URL followed by code. Now, this code is our authorization code. Let's go ahead and make sure we copy that. Now, once that is done, we have completed step three, which is the generation of our authorization code. Now, the last and final step is to generate the refresh token for which once again, we are going to navigate back to Postman. Now, in order to get the refresh token, we are going to make an API call to this particular URL. And the call is going to be a post call. So as you can see, we have a placeholder for bearer realm, which we, which we collected in step two. So let's go ahead and copy that particular value and paste that here. Once that is done, Let's go to headers. Now in headers, we want to provide the content type. Now the value we need to pass to this is application x www form URL encoded. Now once that is done, let's go to body and we need to pass all of the details that we've gathered in the previous three steps as a part of the body for this particular request. Now, this is the va uh, template of what we need to pass to the API in order to generate the refresh token. Let's just go ahead and 
copy each value and replace the placeholders starting with client ID which we generated in step 1 followed by we need the better, better realm which was collected in step 2 so let's just replace the better realm and as you can see it's also required here let me paste that there as well the next required value is the client secret which was again generated in step 1 Let's paste that. The authorization code is what we just generated in step 3. So let's copy that into this particular request. Now the redirect URL is something we used way back in step 1. Let's go ahead and copy that in as well. If you can recall, you would remember that we copied an additional value apart from the bearer realm in step 2 that is the value that we need to paste here that is the principal id now the site host is the base url of the sharepoint instance that you're connecting to so just replace that as well now once all of this is done let's just go ahead and click on send now that will go ahead and provide us with the refresh token that we need so this is the refresh token let's also go ahead and copy that and hold on to it for setting up the connection now this completes step four of the prerequisites let's directly jump into creating the connection so we are back on IICS where we need to provide the details that we've generated so far. So let me copy the client ID from step one, client secret again from step one. The refresh token is what we generated now in the final step of the prerequisites. The redirect URL is the one we've been using so far in every step along the way. Now, the URL is meant to be the base URL of the SharePoint instance. So, the base URL is just this much. Uh, be very careful not to provide the site name or the subsite name in this URL. That will lead to the connection failing. So, the URL is meant to be just the base SharePoint URL. Now, the attachment file path field is the path on the secure agent where you want the SharePoint files to get downloaded when you're pros uh, when you're downloading files from document libraries. So just go ahead and provide a valid path on the secure agent. Following that, the subsite URL is going to be the URL which contains both the name of your site and subsite. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste that here. So now once this is done, let's go ahead and test the connection. Well, and that gives us a successful connection. So let's go ahead and save that. And that brings us to the end of the demo for the setup of the SharePoint online connection. These are a few reference URLs. Uh, now we have used multiple URLs and API calls with the API body and all of these we started with a template. Now all of those templates or structures are available in the uh, first link that you're seeing on the screen. Now these links sh should be available in the description for your reference. So go ahead and open the first link and pick up the uh, URL templates or URL structures from that document for setting up your own SharePoint connection. We would love to hear your feedback. So if you have any comments or feedback you want to share with us, please reach out to us at supportvideos at informatica.com or you can also give us uh, your feedback on Twitter. Thank you.